G'day viewers. Welcome back to Aussie Backyard Food. Well, as you can see, we're back in the Aussie Backyard Food Apri. And well, hasn't it been a long, hot, dry summer? We've actually just snuck our way into autumn now. It's the first day of autumn, 2018, and the bees are pumping. Bees love weather like this. Who doesn't? They don't even mind a long, hot, dry summer. As long as there's just enough water for them to drink and also obviously for the plants to flower because dry weather means they can get out and forage which they've been doing a lot of and dry weather well it's not such a big deal if you're an Aussie beekeeper because our native plants have evolved to deal with dry summers right now we're in what we beekeepers refer to as a honey flow. Hundreds of thousands of bees are cashing in on the abundant supplies of nectar in the stringy bark that is also currently flowering and in particular the native bloodwood which the flowers the blossoms are just soaked dripping with nectar and that nectar that the bees collect well that's between 60 and 80 percent water which they can carry almost their own entire body weight as they fly back to the hive. And the process of evaporating all that water off all that nectar is a long one. And as you can imagine, the smell around all my hives right now is amazing. It smells like I'm in a honey factory. And today's mission, we're here to rob the bees. Yep, we wanna get some of that liquid gold in some buckets so I can use it for my recently discovered passion for making mead and also so that I can supply some comb honey for the local annual harvest festival. I also want to try a new method of uncapping the frame so you know how it goes let's get into it. Isn't she beautiful? Look at that! some stringy bark only 50 meters from my hives and I'll take you into a close-up of the red bloodwood blossom this is only 10 meters from my hives as the bee flies of course there you go there's an even closer close-up just dripping with nectar prime bee fodder now isn't that beautiful here we go with my, one of my foundationless frames and you can see just the natural shape that bees will tend to build their comb starting at the top and they often construct that sort of water drip shape with their comb until it joins up. All right, so there's an example. 80% full frame. It's actually, this one's foundationless as well. So you gotta be careful you, you don't tip these horizontally. If you wanna turn them around, you gotta stand them on their end because there's no wire going through the middle supporting them. And we'll move this one to the very end and get them working on some empty ones. There's a foundation frame that they're simply drawing out on the pre-existing hexagonal shapes within that foundation. And here's some footage of how I embed the sheets of wax foundation to the pre-installed wiring in the middle of the frame. I'll only whack a foundationless frame in between two other foundation frames to encourage the bees to build nice straight comb. one out, pop the full one in the end. The reason I would have cut out the middle of this frame 
even though obviously it is uh, foundationless, no wire running through the guts of it, is because there might, perhaps there was a wax moth issue there, but the bees will infill that when they get to it without a problem. As I choose to put one less frame in the upper box to encourage my bees to draw out nice fat frames of honey, I find it's important to spend a little time to space your frames evenly. Heavily glued down. Once again, the polystyrene continues to outperform. That is just chockers. Wow, I well, know straight away. Struth. Out of frame. Not bad, eh? Good to go. See, the thing is, I've noticed this hive, you know, there's not even that much activity in and out of the front door, particularly of late. And it has you thinking, well, does that mean they're unhealthy? They're struggling? No, it just simply means, I think, that they're full, they're ready for winter. They've slacked off. I need to get them working. See, one of the disadvantages with going queen excluder free, as I've sung its praises in my previous uh, harvest episode, is the bees will attempt to put brood in this upper box. You know, sometimes that just means you've got to go and see what's in the next box down and you'll find a bucket load of honey. So, it just means you've got to manipulate them a bit more. So you can see that. To me, it doesn't look like they're preparing that for brood. They're just, uh, for whatever reason, a little bit slow on that one. Perhaps I checkerboarded this last time. You know, it probably would be all right. One of the tests you can also do is to give it a shake, just to see how liquid it is. Oh yeah, nice. Here we go. Well stuck down. All right. You can always tell the age of the cappings, judging by the colour of the, these cappings being quite white. They're very fresh. It's usually about now that I'm grateful my hives aren't any further from my house. And it's on to the next hive we go. This real yellow comb these bees make. They've always done that. Just have to put that down to different genetics. Give it a shake test. Bit of open comb there. And she's the goods. Right up. This looks like another full box. Excellent. Now that's heavy. I hope you can appreciate from your comfy seat at home just how thick and luscious that looks. Fat, fat frame. Look at that for a gnarly frame. But Jesus, there's a lot of honey in there. Yep. Check that out. It's going to be hard to clean up. Okay. 
you'll see with this next frame that I end up putting it back because there is brood on the inside edge of it. glad that part of the job is over being that it's only the first day of autumn first of March it's bloody hot and muggy out there as you can see this is the ugly side of beekeeping but anyway it's all good I've got three boxes of chocker block frames we're gonna we're gonna have a good haul I'm expecting I don't know around about two two buckets out of that haul and there'll be plenty of meat out of that and plenty of good drinking. Let's get on with it. Second thoughts, you know what? I need a coffee. And I'm gonna enjoy with that a bit of fresh honeycomb morning tea. So now it's time to uncap our frames. But today I wanna to try a couple of different things. As well as trying to make uh, a bit of comb honey and bottling that up into some jars that I've pre-purchased, I'm gonna try a different method of uncapping. Uh, for those of you that have watched any of my other episodes, you would have seen that uh, I used to use a, a hot knife, a hot uncapping knife. It's simply a, a, uh, a knife with an element in it. You plug the other end in, it heats up, and it melts the cappings away. But I'm not real happy with that uh, idea, and I, I believe it does influence, add a, add a little uh, taint to the flavor of my honey. Uh, in the, my previous episode, you would have seen me use this, a capping scraper. The downside with that is it breaks the cappings up into almost individual pieces, uh, which clogs this strainer up. So you're forever scooping cappings out to, to free up the honey so that it can flow through this, particularly when it's nice and thick like it often is. So today, and credit to one of my uh, long-time uh, viewers and subscribers. Uh, I hope I've got this right. Uh, 5125 Honey in Adelaide. He suggested that I go with a bread knife. And I like the sound of that. So today, I'll give the old bread knife a go. Let's get into it. with having such fat frames of honey is that it should be relatively easy to carve off the face with the bread knife without having to dig too deep into within the uh, thickness of that timber frame. Come on, out you come. I can see it's important to keep maintain a sawing action, otherwise you're just destroying the cone. You know what? It's not gonna be easy. There's a bit more work in it, but I think it'll be worth it. Do a bit of frame maintenance as we go. Find it best, if you, particularly if you've got an extractor that only turns one direction, to put your frames in with the top bar at the back. So this is your leading edge, this is your back edge. Due to the angle of the comb, bees will, because obviously this is the top edge, bees will angle their comb slightly downwards. That means it'll extract easier when your leading edge is the bottom edge of the frame. And we're away. Now remember, slow and steady to start with. The reason we want to go slow and steady is because we want that 
first side of the frame to empty, but not get pushed through because of the weight of the inside edge of the frame. You know what? I think I might even half empty it, then flip, flip it over and do the other side. Then flip it back to the first side and finish her off. Because what I'm hoping to be able to do, given that we're still in the middle of a flow, is put these uh, empty, undamaged frames back on those hives and have the girls refill them over the next few weeks. Right, uh, that'll do us. Put the brakes on that. Flip them over. Leaving the top bar on the same side. like this extractor, it's called a Kunstelj. It comes all the way from Slovenia, so here's to my Slovenian brother beekeepers. Respect. Okay, I believe in certain other industries, this is called the money shot. In the beekeeping industry, we call it the honey shot. Oh, oh, oh. Get an eyeful of that. That's what I'm talking about. Not too many cappings in there either, so look how freely she's flowing through the sieve and into the bucket, that's really, Good, that's what we wanted to see. Something else I'm having a go at just today is to use my capping scraper a little bit differently to push it under the caps and lift them off. heating up. Alright, I've got to make a big deal about this one. This is what beekeepers dreams are made of. If you're a beekeeper, you know what I'm talking about. A big, heavy, thick, fat frame of local raw honey. Doesn't get much better than that. Well, one unexpected problem that I found with the new bread knife technique is you end up taking a lot more honey and a lot more wax with each pass. So as a result, I'm not even halfway through the job yet and the normally adequately sized catch tray is full. So, time to upgrade. There's your honey shot. And while I'm at it, let me tell you, when you're sweating it out on a hot day like today, nothing quenches your thirst like an icy cold glass of home brewed kombucha. And if you want to see how to make your own, your very own homebrew kombucha, check out my last episode. Ah, cheers. Look, I promise this will be the last frame I brag about. But check it out. The thickness. It's just so heavy. Go over in a bit of detail in my last honey harvest 
episode about just how just what technique I use to get nice thick frames of honey like this it's well it's basically just leaving one frame out of your top box making sure all your frames are evenly spaced and allowing those bees a bit of room to spread out and thicken up those frames yes weather's come in while we've been extracting so we're under the pump to get these frames back on the bees as you can see it's starting to look a little nasty and the bees don't like getting wet down you go out of the way Nothing calms them down like these sticky frames. The smell of honey, it's got to be what does it. Nearing the end of another big day extracting honey, and probably the biggest downside, I say, there is with the uh, bread knife uncapping method is just the effort it's going to take separating all the honey as you can see there's kilos in there from the wax cappings themselves uh, that's just draining away there but um, I'm gonna to have to come up with an alternative method I think some sort of crush and strain set up I think to uh, get all that honey off that wax Homemade crush and strain set up pot with a strainer or whatever you call them, a sieve, normally used for steaming. Whack the uh, cappings in there without making too much mess and crush it with a potato masher. And so concludes another successful honey harvest. We got a little over 60 kilos in the end and the way the bees are going at the moment I look forward to getting at least that again in a few more weeks. I also look forward to being able to provide plenty of this. It's freshly harvested, real, raw, sugar syrup free comb honey to the local annual Harvest Festival here in Woodford. 10 kilos went straight into this brewing vessel. As I mentioned before, it's my latest passion. Here's a sample of my first ever batch of mead. It's a sweet spiced mead and I don't know if it was beginner's luck, but I tell you what, it's a top drop. Mm. And the upshot of the various uncapping methods that we've experimented with over the years. As I mentioned, hot knife, ditching that. Capping scraper, we've given that a red hot go. And whilst it does clog up the old two part strainer, it's pulled in front in my estimations. The problem with with the bread knife, it, it wastes a lot of honey and there's a lot of effort in, in crushing and straining. All well and good if you've got your own crusher and strainer. Yeah, I'm gonna leave the potato masher for just mashing potatoes. So, back to the capping scraper we go. And the simple alternative is that I've got another one of these on order. So I'll be able to have two separate buckets draining at any one given time. And of course, 
always get a bit of wax for next year's Christmas candles. Don't forget to check out that episode. Myself and uh, good mate Shep, who you'll remember from previous episodes, we've been upskilling ourselves in the art of how to bring home some free range venison with archery equipment. Yeah, a little harder than we expected, but we're getting there. That'll be the next episode. I'm not far off doing a how to make meat episode. I just want to rule out the chance that this lovely drop was beginner's luck. I'm feeling pretty confident, but a little more experience under the belt wouldn't hurt. So stay tuned. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.